Hey guys, welcome back to uh, another video here. I'm sorry I didn't get this up to you or up um, Monday, but here we're going to be continue our work on what, what I what I have dubbed the Apollo violin. Um, so these these parts were start. Uh, I'm sorry. These this violin was started from some pre-made parts that are very roughly finished now, and I use the word finish loosely, um, but it. it allows me to take a huge chunk of labor off the process of making them. So here's what I got. This is the uh, the top plate of this violin. You can already see it's already got the sound holes carved in here. And lucky that this one already has the purfling, that, which is that uh, the little black lines that go around the outside, which is actually, um, contrary to popular belief, a lot of people think that we draw these on with like a little like a fine two or a fine point um, sharpie pen or marker, but these are actually, and I uh, have to bring them in for one of the other videos. But um, it's actually just a strip that that has three different pieces of wood to, uh, pressed together. So you have the black woods on the outside, and then a light one on the inside, and it's actually inlaid into the top and the bottom plate. Um, it gives a little bit more structural, you know, support. Um, this is made of spruce, which is typical of most violins. Um, you can make some instruments out of uh, a type of plywood, which is very common when you get up to like the big double bass instruments, just because to find the solid wood big enough and quality enough to make those parts, uh, it becomes insanely expensive. So um, it's common there. I've done, uh, I've actually done one of my, I've done 50 violins now and one of them has incorporated uh, a type of plywood and I was somewhat uh, skeptical but it turned out to be one of my favorite instruments to play so uh, it's definitely something I'm gonna look into down the road uh, trying to come up with like just different models and packages but all right so this is the starting with the top plate and you guys can see here this little piece right here is also made of spruce and it's uh, uh, before they glue it in here and you guys will see this but when I when I make my own, we're gonna take this out of here. But it's um, it's carved to fit the the curve of the top plate. And once it's glued in and, and the glue dries, uh, then you'll go through and you'll shape it. And this helps with the acoustics and support for the instrument. So tools that I'm gonna use for this. These are just smaller planes, and by a plane, it's just a little carrier that holds. A, there you go. That holds this little blade in here and you can adjust how big that is uh, which changes the uh, you know how the opening here so take off more uh, or you can take off less depending on what you're trying to do so this one has a curved bottom and this is just a larger finger plane this one is just just a flat blade made by Stanley it's uh, it's just multi-purposes most of my finger planes I only use ever for working on these instruments so here's what's gonna happen. I got my work uh, my work area set here. Um, I'm gonna I basically am supporting this on really thick fabric to to kind of you know keep it in place. So I'll start um, just basically here at the high spot on this bridge. Now what you what we tend to like to do is instead of just going you know straight on like this, if you angle it, it it more or less helps to slice through the wood and you, you usually meet less resistance. All right, so here I'm gonna start with the, the flat one until it gets a little bit down in, then I'll go with the curved bottom one to kind of get down into the, you know, the curve of this top plate. So I'll just start here. This is one of my favorite parts, you know. Um, here, let me get my hand out of the way here. Typically I'll hold it like this to kind of stabilize it, but I'm trying to get it so you guys can see it as well. So I'll just go like this, and I'll just start. And sometimes, like this one's chattering along a little bit, so what you can do for that is to just turn it around and it usually glides a little bit better. But as you can see, you know, it just takes off little pieces, of, little ribbons of these woods, so it takes a little bit here. Let's try this direction. Yeah, it's much better. See, it's not chattering as much. Sometimes it's just, you know, finding what direction works best with the grain. Um, here, let me see. I'm going to try to move my hand up here a little bit. I have my sophisticated way of holding this uh, cell phone in, in, in its spot here. 
All right, let me see if I can move this up. Okay, let me just get this right here. All right, here we go. That's a little bit better. I'll hold it back here just so you can see a little bit of it. Slide across, and then you get these these cool little uh, you know, spirals of wood that come off here. Uh, and my cats go nuts for this stuff. All right, I'm gonna stop this portion right here, and I'll pick back up once. All right, welcome back. Uh, a few minutes have passed here, and you can kind of see my progress here. Uh, that's these are the shavings of this base bar, and you can see it's not. You, you know, I'll put them right down here. My little pieces of wood. All right, so you can see here on the top of this thing that I'm basically just started taking this hump away, and I have, I'll use the flat one a little bit more, but once I get maybe down down to let me lean this forward right about here, I'll switch to that curved side. Um, so I'm going to flash ahead just uh, a couple of minutes, and we'll pick back up with it. All right, we're checking back in here. Um, I have switched from just my flat finger plane to my curved finger plane, and you guys can see I'm starting to get my mound of formerly known as base bar wood and you can kind of see right here i'll get you closer here is that this guy is disappearing rapidly so i'm gonna you're gonna or i'm gonna show you a little bit of me working on this guy and then we'll flash forward to uh when i finally get this guy out of here all right so i just start keep it uh slightly cocked to the side kind of help that blade slice through that you just try to go all the way through and you can see it just ribbons that stuff off of there so this is one of the, the more fun and what all my <laughs> friends and uh, students typically say when they see something like this is, wow, that's satisfying. And it is. Just reducing this little piece of this bar of spruce down to ribbons. And if you can get your blade really sharp. Now th this one I have a fairly large gap because I'm trying to hawk away a bunch of wood. But if I'm trying to really fine tune something, I'll take this blade out. I'll sharpen. I got sharpening stone in my tools over here, um, and then I'll try to get this opening right where my finger is here, as you know, razor thin as I can get it, so I can slowly kind of um, what's the word I'm looking for? Slowly kind of join two uh, surfaces together. But yep. So I'm gonna continue taking out this space bar. And I'll come back to show you what I got as soon as I uh, as soon as I get down to the plate itself. All right, guys, we are back. I and you can see right here my my lovely what used to be base bar in this top. Now again, this is something that I only have to do when I'm starting with like any prefab part or partially finished part. When I'm doing them from scratch. Uh, you know, clearly there's not going to be a base bar in there anyway, and then I'll just, you know, once I get the, the plate done, then I can map it out and put my own base bar in like you guys are going to see on this one. But as you can see, I now no longer have a base bar. Okay? Um, the next thing that we will do for the next video um, is, uh, I have, um, I'll go through and I'll measure this to see how thick this is in millimeters all the way around here. And then I'll take a pencil, I'll kind of map out exactly how I want the thicknesses to graduate. Typically from the outside, I start lower uh, or thinner. And then as it gets to this middle part here, which supports the bridge on the top of it, it's that's where your support's gonna be. Now along with the base bar, once I get this thing all back together, uh, you'll so you have this big bass bar here on the on the the low pitch side of the instrument, and then on the other side, the treble side, we call it. You will have it sitting kind of right here, and that's a little post that goes from the top and the bottom. And along with this bass bar, kind of really, you can tune in the uh, the acoustics to get a, an even tone. So okay, now um, I'm not going to put any questions in this assignment this week. You know, and this one, this one's just here for you guys to enjoy. But again, the biggest thing that we are doing here was taking away what we call the base bar that, that, that came in this thing. And as I got down here, it looks like they didn't even use the right type of glue. It looks more like a wood glue as opposed to uh, what we call the animal hide glue that I typically use for um, gluing these things. You can see <laughs> right about, uh, it's not going to show up too well, but it's got this, this film of what looks to be wood glue, which would explain... Um, typically we'd heat up if we took something apart top plate or bottom plate we can heat it off 
or heat it up because that an, or the animal hide glue will soften up and allow you to remove it, which is one of the reasons that you, you shouldn't leave your instrument out in the sun, you know, out in the heat, out in your car when, during the summer when it gets hot because those seams, you know, that glue will soften up and those seams will open up and they have to be re-glued. So, okay, so we had our base bar. And then we also use these two tools. These are different types of uh, finger planes, or this one's more of a, like a palm plane. Um, but I will get a smaller one than this. I have a few that are smaller that we'll use for smaller details. So we'll pick back up uh, next week where I will have this guy measured, my thickness gauges, and I will go around, map out exactly how thick I want at each part. And then we'll start back with these finger planes to kind of hog away the extra stuff to get it exactly where I want it to be. Um, I, I don't have uh, I don't have comments enabled because this is designed for kids, so I don't you know I don't want weird people to show up and do comments. But if you have any questions about this stuff, um, feel free to shoot me an email. I can answer your questions, or uh, you can message me through your teacher's dojo class. But any, any questions you have, any things that you, uh, I don't know, just, just piqued your interest that you wanted to know something specific about, shoot me a message and I'd be happy to answer them for you. And we'll check back with you next week. Have a great weekend. Um, oh, happy holiday break. You know, I'll still be posting videos um, throughout the break, but it's not going to be it for assignments. Um, and we'll pick back up and we'll just do some more question assignments when we get back in January uh, and see where we're at. We... I think by January, we may be a little bit far along in the process. That's going to be kind of fun. Um, great. Have a good break if I don't see you. Uh, and see you all when you get back.